Welcome back to the Law Talks with Tokes series, LTWT. I'm your host, Tokes Hussain. Our guest today is a man who requires little introduction, Oba Nsube KCSAN, one of my mentors. Having been called to the bar in 1985 and taken silk in 2002, aged only 39, Oba has made and continues to make incredible contributions to our legal profession as a barrister, specifically as King's Counsel and Senior Advocate of Nigeria and Crown Court Recorder. Oba is the head of Pump Court Chambers, and in 2001, he founded the British Nigeria Law Forum, BNLF, an organization that I'm actively involved with, which is the leading bilateral association of British and Nigerian lawyers. In this LTWT episode, we will explore Oba's journey into law, his future aspirations, and the future of the BNLF and legal profession. The interview you're about to watch was created as part of a wider project of mine, a documentary that I directed last year about the BNLF. And I'm very pleased to say that it premieres this year. Enjoy. So we are now in, in a temple. Okay. And uh, to my right is the chapel, in the temple chapel. All right. And it's one of the oldest chapels in the city. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. And the curious thing about this chapel is that in, during the war, Second World War, where the bombs were falling in this area, and you can tell mm-hmm. some of the other buildings are new. Yeah. The bombs create quite a lot of destruction, but somehow they all missed <laughs> this chapel, which was clearly being watched over by somebody. Clearly divine intervention, <laughs> wasn't divine it? Intervention. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these are newer buildings and okay. um, in the temple hall. Um, so um, I've practiced here for 33 years. Um, I must say I've had the, I would say I've had the, I've had the privilege Mm. Uh, practicing here for over 30 years. Um, it is serene. Mm-hmm. It is unique. It lends itself to a collegiate feel. Yeah. Um, it also lends itself to learning. You know, quite often you're learning in silence and you're researching in silence. And at the same time, there's a, um, a, a a brotherhood and a sisterhood. Yes. Which are the other barristers that work here. So the middle temple is on that side. We're in the temple. Up the road is Lincoln's Inn, as you know. Uh, that's my inn. That's your inn. The best and inn in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't disagree. Um, and then Gray's Inn, which is my inn. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a very bonded profession. It's quite close. Um, you know, it's not a huge profession. Yeah. But uh, there's a feeling of security. I, I guess the, I wouldn't call it a downside, but the important thing is it's self-regulating. Yes. So because it's so small, you know, if you're hell-bent on doing something which is going to affect your reputation, it gets around very quickly. Mm. And, uh, um, but I would say that it's, you feel the, you feel the sense of age. Yes. You feel the sense of history. You feel the responsibility. Around here, right, there is a, there is a something up on the, these chambers here, at the back of, of Hare Court, um, which reminds you of what, of how small you are. And that's like, uh, it says, like shadows, like shadows we are, like shadows we depart. So in other words, don't even think that you're here for very long. Uh, it's, it just reminds us that, that people have gone before us, people will come after us, and the time you have, you've got to use very usefully. Yes. Yeah. You've got to use it. You've got to really use it. Carpe diem. Yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting having this sense of history, and I'm personally rather interested in your history as to how you became involved in this uh, noble profession. So, so I know your father was a very important part of your my journey. Father, my father was an important part of my, my journey. Yeah. In fact, my father um, was a university professor. Yeah. Um, he, he was a, a professor at uh, Tsuka University. Before that, he taught um, in various places, including Osaka. Okay. 
And he was also at the British Museum mm -hmm. talking about African arti artifacts. That's a specialist area, history of African man. My father cared about education as all Nigerian fathers and mothers do. Yes. It's all about <laughs> education. And I did not care about education. I cared about other things. So when I was like 17, mm -hmm. he caught me sneaking past in, uh, in, in the parlor in, in, in Nigeria, sat me down and said, listen, you know, can you tell me what you want to do um, in your life? It was a big question. And I started going on about, oh, I'm ready to play football, you know, I'm quick, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm skillful, da da da. Maradona. Stuff, Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody, yeah. every Nigerian plays football and kind of thinks they can play football. And um, he listened for about two, three minutes and he just said, uh, you, you'll do law. <laughs> that, was, that was it. And, and that's settled. That, that was the, I mean, I, of course, tried to fight back. I mean, insofar as you're allowed to. I questioned the rationale of law. Why did he think I should be doing law? And he said that he'd, re he'd been reading my old school reports, which didn't make good reading. And a report that he read when I was aged 13, one of my schoolmasters in that school said that this, this young man will be a lawyer. He should be a lawyer. And he, my father hang on to this rash statement. <laughs> And so when your dad at that stage tells you you're doing law, you do law, right? Even though you pretend that you're dissenting, but you're not dissenting. And I think that now I think back, your parents, <laughs> your parents, they know what they're talking about, yeah. right? <laughs> and he, he, saw, he saw what I should be doing and he, he saw why I should be doing it. And I think he was right. What has the journey been like for you? Um, obviously now you are QC, you're you're head of the chambers, which is quite close here, actually. And uh, you, you're a SAN as well, senior advocate of Nigeria, and you're a judge. So it's a quite extraordinary journey. How, how, how has it been for you? Well, it feels like it's been a short journey, mm. although it hasn't. Um, okay. And it feels like things have happened quickly, although they haven't. Um, so. It's been a journey in which you don't really realize that you're achieving certain milestones at the time because you've yeah. got your head down. Um, but the way in which I've approached this journey is I've taken it literally day by day. So I take a case and I approach it as if it's my last case. It's the last case I'm ever going to do. And I approach it as if the clients I'm representing, whether it be corporate or individual, is the last client that's going to instruct me. So I kind of, thinking back, what I have done is, I've, is, if we imagine building a house, I've taken one brick and I've put it in a particular place and I've maybe just adjusted it a bit and then I've planted it. I've taken another brick, it has been as systematic as that. Um, and these bricks tend to be um, hard work, so they represent hard work, they represent research, they represent um, making sure that when you're dealing with people that you respect them and you respect everybody. Um, it's also about, the journey has also been about appreciating the fact that you are a Nigerian. Now I know that sounds, um, in a way it sounds opaque, but what I appreciate about being a Nigerian is that we are a people that are well educated, we are resilient, we have a little bit of mischief about us in a kind of, I say, um, I'd say in a kind of friendly kind way, mm. you know, some would call it swagger, some would call it pride, some would call it beating our chests. No. Um, whatever you want to call it, as long as we do it in moderation and with respect for other people, but Nigerians hold their heads up. Yeah. So uh, I have always been very, very aware. Yeah. And you know a Nigerian where... You know a Nigerian. You, you know, you yeah. know a Nigerian. Of course we have our faults, because sometimes we do it in excess. Um, and sometimes we do it to the exclusion of other Africans, which is uh, a fair criticism. But at the same time, Nigerians represent <laughs> We, we represent, I mean, yeah. you cannot go somewhere and a Nigerian will be sitting there shy somewhere. I mean, I remember the story 
of the Commonwealth Leaders Conference in Scotland. I think it was in Glen Eagles. And they were all positioning themselves for an official photo. And you had, you know, the heads of governments, heads of states. And of course, General Abbas and Joe, he'd been put at the back. <laughs> He pushed it and sat, stood at the front. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking, yes. <laughs> he was in the middle of the, of the group. And that's what we do. Yeah. You know? uh, it's fine doing that as long as you don't mess up. Once you get there, you cannot afford to mess up. Mm. Um, so so I, it's, it's been a very rewarding journey. It's great doing it collectively. Um, so I've, I've, by collective, what I mean is I've relied on a lot of people. I've had a lot of help. Um, and I've met, I've met a lot of good people, you know, men and women around me that have, have really inspired me myself. So um, I haven't arrived there, just, I haven't just arrived here without a track record or without a assistance, you know. Um, but having arrived, when you get to this position, if you don't use your position to help other people, and to pass on things, then you you haven't you failed. Yes, it's as simple as that. You failed. You can forget it. Um, it's not a personal achievement. Yeah. So it, it's it's really about legacy, isn't it? You know. Um, and and for you, the, the greatest success is to see your level of success replicated in you know the future. Undoubtedly, right. Josh. Undoubtedly, yeah. and I see that. I see that with the junior law division. You know, the JLD of 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 the Nigerian Law Forum, where you have young, dynamic, great minds, and you can tell that they're focused. You can tell yeah. that they have a pride in excellence. And you can tell that they have that pride in being Nigerian. And it, I'm talking, you know, we're talking about generations of Nigerians that, in fact, may have grown up here. A lot of, a lot of the younger Nigerians have grown up here, but, 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 there is a gene in them which is Nigerian. And you can deny all you like. I, all I can tell you, is that if you are open-minded, if you're conscious, which you need to be, at some stage that gene is going to show. It's going to show. You cannot hold it back. A Nigerian yeah. gene w will show. And then once it shows, you've got to find your own journey. You've got to decide to yourself, okay, how am I going to use this inspiration? How am I going to use this history? How am I going to use the fact that I have this privilege of being a Nigerian, educated Nigerian? What am I going to do? You know, am I just going to just like waste it? No, you've got to do something with it. I and mean, we all do different things. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, the more of us doing positive things will drown out all that negativity. This is Law Talks with Tokes, with your host, Tokes Hussain. The Nigeria Law Forum, right, the British Nigeria Law Forum is on a journey of its own. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to see is we're going to see in that journey, we're going to see change. We're going to see accession. Yeah. And we're probably going to see some flux. We're going to probably see some down days, some down moments where the organization may struggle. But where you have a core group of people that believe in what they're doing, believe in what they're doing, the organization will succeed. Mm. Troughs aside, the organization will succeed. Yes. And it is also around those younger people gradually assuming leadership because they have to you know they have to and and in that in that leadership you actually grow yourself as a person yeah and i've seen amongst the younger lawyers indeed amongst the older lawyers that are now there i've seen them literally grow okay so they when i say grow they started off as shy you know um retiring they'd be in the background but now you suddenly see them in the foreground yes. with new ideas, new energy, new dynamism, and that's their, that's their role. And I guess they continue the organization and they too make way for young blood. That's I, how it be. I, I agree. I mean, I've, as you know, I've headed the JLD for some time and I've seen many members make a, a, a remarkable transition, mm. you know, mm. shy, mm afraid mm -hmm. and now with the right encouragement training you know they're they're bold yeah and i i don't know about you but i certainly feel that um my generation and the generation after me that they are 
people who are strong, yeah. they have deep convictions yeah. that they can change I the agree. world. And it's something which I think should be encouraged. And so completely, completely. let's see more of that. And, and yeah. I think the, the role that we have to play yeah. is, you know, with our experiences, just to encourage, to guide whenever we guide. And when we're needed to, to open doors, we should go and open doors. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't think the younger generation need us for anything else, to be honest. Um, the passion that I have for this organization will always, always be there. What surprises me is that what began as a sort of like a, an idea, a concept, is shared by other people. Yeah. And other people then, you know, you have this idea, it's shared by the people, number one. Number two, shared by other people with equal passion. That's what really surprises me. And, you know, you, you then think, oh, wow, that actually the idea did make sense. Yes. The idea does make sense. And the idea will make sense in the future. You know, there always will be a role for an organization that is bilateral, mm -hmm. supportive, professional, and really plays a role in developing us as lawyers and making sure that we're connected. And at the same time, connected and rooted. Yeah. And I, you know, I see that now in this organization. I saw that under Babs's leadership. I saw that under Shea's leadership. I saw that under Stephen's leadership. And I see that under the leadership of the, the British Nigeria Law Forum now. And I, you know, I can only say that long may continue. So it, it's obviously 21 years since you founded this organization. And uh, what makes an organization great, really, it's its members, I'm sure you'd agree with me. Uh, you know, as a successful and influential um, person in the legal field, um, can you just reflect on some of the achievements and, and uh, highlights of fellow uh, black and African minority leaders in the past uh, 21 years in the legal yeah, field? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the successes are multiplying. Yeah. So when I was practicing, there weren't that many, there, weren't, there were few, there weren't that many successful black lawyers. Um, now there, there are many, many more. For example, if I look at the city, right, the city of London, just talk about the city of London, I look there to Nigerian associates everywhere. Yeah. And they're not just like, you know, in some of the smaller firms, they're in the top firms. And in the top firms, they're kicking it. They are really mm. kicking it. If I look at the bar, you now have the Black Barristers Network. And the Black Barristers Network, very successful, addressing things like racial inequality in the judiciary, addressing things like inequality of work distribution. They're tackling different difficult issues. Guess who is in the forefront of those lawyers? Nigerians. Not just Nigerians, but generally speaking, they're there. Yes. Okay. And if I look at the number of women silks, for example, female silks, female QCs at the bar, I think there's only six, right? In the whole of the UK, there's only six. Three, four of them, Nigerians, you know? Um, so if we look now at the judiciary, of course, there's still a way to go in the higher echelons of the judiciary, particularly in the high court. Since Linda Dobbs, still no black high court judge. I mean, how can that be? Um, but uh, in the echelons that are below that, you're seeing Nigerian judges. District judges on the civil side, you're seeing Nigerian judges. Right. I mean, we have them in the, in the British Nigeria Law Forum. We've had them promoted to that. So the landscape has changed so much. I'm excited for it. Um, it's really good to see. And I just can see it just improving across both professions, no. solicitors and barristers. So what's your hope for the next 21 years in not just BNLF, but the legal profession? Listen, first, my first yeah. hope is BNLF. Right, of course. I'm actually. afraid I'm partisan, <laughs> completely partisan. Yeah. <laughs> um, my first hope is that the British Nigeria Law Forum is still thriving in 21 years' time. Yeah. And I'm sure it will be. My second hope is that black lawyers continue to excel in greater and greater numbers and also in a more diversified way. Yes. So not just excel in the city, but excel in the, in the, in the publicly funded work, um, excel in the corporates, um, excel obviously in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my aspiration. And I believe that that comes back to where you're from. 
Yeah. So that, that's where it starts. It starts with what did your parents tell you? How did they bring you up? What plants did they sow? What seeds did they sow in you as a person? That's where it starts. Did you take your education seriously eventually? And for me, I'm afraid it was eventually because I didn't initially, but I realized, of course, something goes off in your head and that's usually from something your father or mother said. That's usually knuckle down, right? And so when it came to it, I knuckled down. Um, and I think also we're ambitious. We're ambitious yeah. for ourselves and we're ambitious. Um, we should be ambitious for each other. We should be ambitious for people. Okay. That's what I like to see. Yeah. And you like to see me as a QC? I'd course. love to see you as a yeah. QC, yes. We'll do. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll get there. Thank you very Thank much, you. Albert. Thank you, Jules. All right. Been a pleasure. Good. Well done. Good, good, good. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Law Talks with Tokes. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Tokes the Saying, share and leave a comment. Ciao.